What's good ladies and gents, welcome to the MKL Pugilism Boxing Channel where we talk all things box. Remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, put it on also to get notified of all of our latest content on this channel. So without further ado, let's get into it. So over the weekend, we not only had Javante Tank Davis versus uh, Mario Barrios, we also had the one I was more looking forward to, which was Lomachenko versus Nakatani. Uh, the Japanese fight, a very tall guy. So, um, yeah, this was uh, Lomachenko's comeback fight um, after a long time of inactivity, over a year of, of inactivity on his part. He hadn't fought since his loss um, to Teofimo Lopez uh, back last year. So this was a significant one for him because it was a comeback. Um, he didn't select the easiest opponent, uh, Nakatani, even if just for his his dimensions um tall rangy awkward and lomachenko is certainly not the tallest guy or anything so and he's coming off of his his uh second career loss so this was a risky fight for him this was a sort of potential banana skin where if he's not on his game you know who knows what could have happened um the better fighter the more skilled fighter going into it but again as he's coming off of a loss um depending on where his mind state is and if he's on the game you know on the ball anything could happen here so um lomachenko uh even from the very first round there was a bit of drama he started off um quite cagey but he started off i would say a bit quicker than um he usually starts off um you know he started off a little bit quicker putting a bit of pressure on um nakatani um he did get cut i believe on his forehead in the in in the opening round um this cut i believe was was just due to sort of a clash of heads so so that that happened and yeah he, he, he still sort of carried on with the round still done pretty well um you know lomachenko as i've said one of the significant things in this fight is that in a lot of his bouts he does start off pretty slow um, he's, he's not like a fast starter. He, they say he does calculation sort of thing. So, um, yeah, that's that's it. It, it. This one was a bit different in that respect that he he um, he started it off a bit quicker. He's, he started to sort of put a bit of pressure on a little bit quicker and he started to try and um, sort of stamp, put his stamp on the fight a bit earlier than usual. So um that was an interesting one and that was showing that he he wants to impress at least in my book um nakatani he he you know he let his hands go a bit too um but a lot of the time he was sort of standing off of lomachenko sometimes he he was looking to to land his his counters and, and he holds his his left hand quite low and i suppose as a tall fighter sometimes you can get away with it um, but in this fight, because he's fighting a guy like Lomachenko, very quick, very sharp, very skilled, um, that kind of low slung left hand really sort of played into uh, Lomachenko's hands because Lomachenko had that advantage in, in speed. Um, you know, the, you could see throughout this fight, Lomachenko had big advantage in, in speed of foot and um, maybe a marginal one in, in, in terms of his, his hand speed. He definitely a little bit quicker there. So he was able to get in and out a lot of the time in his fight rather quickly and sharply. And that was one of the things that really impressed me. Um, Lomachenko was definitely um, uh, taking his fight even from the word go. So from round one, two, uh, Lomachenko was, um, he was having little difficulties here and there, but for the most part, he was pretty much taking the fight. And um, one of the significant rounds was uh, round six, where he he definitely um, hurt uh, Nakatani because through this fight, Lomachenko is, as I say, he's not a one punch uh, knockout man, but he's a guy that sort of breaks you down over the rounds, and you know he was always landing these these sneaky left hands on Nakatani throughout the fight, and he was very good in this fight at sort of finding the gaps. Um, the, the the fact that Nakatani was tall. You would think logically that right that might work for him. He could keep Lomachenko at bay, but really and truly wasn't able to do that at all. You know, Lom Lomachenko was able to get in and out of range quite easily, and um, you know, Nakatani would fight back, but he would just be that bit too slow of foot and of hand. So Lomachenko in out, in out, all throughout those early rounds. Um, 
round six, as I say, uh, Lomachenko nailed him uh, nicely again against the ropes. Nakatani, to his credit, he showed that he is a warrior. He, he sort of fought back and he tried to rally back. But you can see Lomachenko was really having having the um, uh, the best of the fight, you know, really having the best of, of the action throughout the most of this fight. Nakatani was always there. He was always trying to throw back. But um, Lomachenko is really having the best of him and sort of dominating most of these rounds here. Um, you know, Nakatani he took some hard shots and, and he also um, got a bad eye injury in, in this fight. And that was very significant because um, I think he had a fractured orbital bone or something like that at, at some point in his career as well. So uh, that that was, it was the fact that he had an eye injury, you know, again, that's, that's a danger sign for him. But to his credit, Nakatani, he just fought right through it and he, he fought as, as if it didn't exist. You know, it was just very, very sort of solid and very much um, on the job. And, you know, throughout this fight, as I say, the, the, what really told, what were really the defining factors were the, the sort of superior speed and skill of Lomachenko, you know, really told. And, and uh, another thing was that head movement of Lomachenko because He's always he always sort of keeps his head off the line, off the center, off the center, and he was always sort of keeping uh, Nakatani guessing. And um, he he was, as I've said in my notes, even here that he another significant thing for Lomachenko is it was like kind of the vintage old Lomachenko how how he used to fight before because he was he wasn't standing off Nakatani he was right there right in the pocket. But although he was right in front of him certain times, he was able to just land these shots. And and these shots were coming from these awkward angles. And that you, you could tell that Nakatani didn't even know where these shots were coming from. You know, he was really able to, to get stuck into Nakatani and land these combinations, go to the body, hard left hands and stuff, and even to the head. So, and some of these are like these arcing shots that come through those gaps and... Yeah, he, he kind of bamboozled and sort of baffled Nakatani a lot of times in this fight because he was just coming from from these out much like in a in a in a sense, um, not exactly the same, but similar to what Manny Pacquiao was doing early in his career, where he'd go to your blind side and hit you and and catch you and, and really hurt you. And 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 half of that hurt comes from the fact that you're surprised and you don't see the shots coming. And that was what Lomachenko was doing consistently all the way through this fight, landing these shots from the blind side and from these angles that Nakatani um was just too slow to 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 cover and too to he just didn't see any of this stuff coming, you know, the very, very um significant for Lomachenko and he went really it didn't hurt him at first, but from that sort of round six onwards, you know, really began to um, get stuck into Nakatani and really sort of break him down. And and one thing also is that I I thought that um, for me, I would have, if I'm Lomachenko or whatever, you would want to go more to the body. Uh, but Lomachenko was able to go to the body minimally, just time to time, and mostly was mainly going to the head. And you would have thought you chop the tree down, you go to the tall man's body a lot early on, and then you build it up. But Lomachenko was mainly sort of going to his head, but it was still done it very successfully without focusing all that much on the body. And um, yeah, as, as the rounds wore on, Lomachenko kept landing from these, these angles. Nakatani couldn't see it coming. And, you know, it, the more the rounds went on, the more spiteful and the more Lomachenko would sort of go through the gears and, and really um, step up his attack. And, you know, the end came in, in round nine as, as Lomachenko really began to, to hurt Nakatani, bashing him with, with, with these crunching body shots and head shots. And, it, you know, he was just firing in on all sim, uh, cylinders, you know, straight left hands, left hands from angles, hooks, everything. He threw the kitchen sink at him in round nine, vintage Lomachenko. And, it, you know, in the end, I think they ended proceedings with a nice left hand and the referee just jumped in and, and say, you know, sort of save Nakatani, you know, did Nakatani just sort of collapse into a heap there. He, he was just absolutely finished in, in that ninth round. So, Again, very, very impressive. Um, I'm impressed with uh, Lomachenko there. Um, this was sort of back to, a, I would say, sort of a vintage Lomachenko performance. This was 
the old things we used to see, the angles, the head movement, um, the high, the high intensity, you know, the, the high pace of boxing and the bamboozling with all these different shots and angles and foot speed. And this was vintage Lomachenko. This was what I want to see from Lomachenko faster start than, than it was against Lopez. And, you know, it showed that he's kind of shaken off the demons and shaken off the, the thoughts of, of, um, of Teofimo Lopez. And another good thing that I'll end on is that Teofimo Lopez Sr., um, he was at the fight. He was ringside, I believe. And he said that, you know, he was honest. He said, look, I'm very impressed by Lomachenko's um, performance. And Lomachenko expressed interest in a rematch. And Lopez Sr. said, yep, yeah, I think he deserves a rematch. He's done a good job there on a the man. Um, we done, you know, he obviously said, we really hurt Nakatani or whatever. And yeah, he was still bigging up his son. But he was quite honest. He said, look, impressive performance by Lomachenko. Um, he said he deserved the rematch. We can get uh, the rematch on. Bob Aaron was there as well, and yeah, Bob Bob was sort of saying, yeah, let's let's have the rematch. Teofimo Lopez Senior seems quite happy to have the rematch, and obviously they've got to get through um, George Cambosis Junior first. They've got to handle that. I think that's going to be a bit later on in the year, and um, they were talking about possibly December for Loma versus Lopez two. Um, Loma said, yeah, maybe maybe next year, December. So fingers crossed and, you know, hopefully we'll um, get that rematch. Provided um, Teofimo Lopez doesn't slip up against uh, this George Campos Jr., provided he beats him, um, no reason why we, we can't have the rematch. And it will be an interesting rematch because I think Lomachenko, he seems to have sort of learned from the Lopez fight. He started a bit quicker and um he he'll have to in my view if they you know if they fight again he'll have to take a few more risks and he'll have to be a bit more aggressive a bit more assertive um uh, at least early in the fight and then step it up and whatnot yeah so anyway yeah that's my thoughts and let me know your thoughts on the fight and um what might happen in a lopez loma rematch um yeah so hopefully we'll have that fight soon and until next time this is mko pugilism over and out. I'll catch you on the next one.